Yes, this was the cutest picture I could find, and I really like it, so I just had to put it there. Um, I'm from the University of Oslo at the Institute of Informatics, and I study a Bachelor in Design, which is um, human-centered interaction design. Uh, I've also had a lot of um, UX courses and not that much, or this is the first which focuses on uh, transition design, which is really, really interesting because I'm in my last year, which is also my second semester in physical school. So it's been a lot of digital this year, <laughs> or these years. Yes, so I can skip this. This is my team. Um, I'm very fortunate to work with uh, Lina and Maria uh, because they're, uh, we're quite different where uh, I'm kind of whimsical and have a lot of ideas and I want to do everything. Uh, Maria is quite, um, I would say, mathematical and she's really structured and Lina just kind of binds us together. So that's been really cool this year. <laughs> Um, yeah, so we've been working, I know Alma and Nick introduced the um, uh, Oslo Children's Museum, so we worked with them. And our case was to host an event or an exhibition where young children and their families are engaged in serious subjects. So uh, we were told that it would be children from one to eight, which is quite a diverse group when you think about how <laughs> different it is from a two-year-old to an eight-year-old. Uh, so that was uh, really interesting. Yeah. We also had uh, a lot of theories of change and uh, wanted to incorporate this and our um, different types of brainstorming. And we had really good use of this, especially this one, which is the, oh, it doesn't say. But when we, <laughs> we talked about our activities, um, uh, in between outcomes, assumptions, and goals. <laughs> uh, and I realized that this is in a region. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> but I just wanted to show some of our processes that we went through. Uh, this was not all at the same time. So we started with our values in order to focus on change. Uh, we were kind of, uh, we wanted to make sure that we were on the same page, both in our team and also uh, with the representative from Oslo Children's Museum, so that we didn't make an exhibition that was totally out of what she wanted and what they wanted. Um, also, it's kind of important for us to focus on optimism because uh, with these wicked problems, at least I find it really difficult to um, create a solution that is dark and depressive and because I think it's so depressive already. <laughs> so we wanted to kind of, at least when we're, I mean, we're focusing on children, it's not their fault. So <laughs> I kind of feel like we can keep it positive. <laughs> uh, yeah, so this just illustrates um, uh, when after we uh, kind of looked at our values, we wanted to make sure that um, this says our exhibition to promote cooperation in climate, um, uh, the climate battle, like uh, sustainability. <laughs> uh, yeah, so this was really nice. Uh, we were, uh, we had different ideas in the beginning. Our initial thoughts were like, okay, uh, maybe they could, uh, we could uh, introduce like repairing tools. So. Uh, if we have like big drawers that uh, have tools in them and then we have different parts of toys and we can make new toys and that would be really cool. Um, and that's why we did this cover story which says a generation of fixers and it was like really cool like <laughs> yes this would be great. Um, we also had a thought that uh, it would be nice to expose visitors of like um, challenging truths so that we could create conversations between them and between us and them. Um, yeah. And our vision is to teach children and their families, which is important, I think, because as I said, it's like it's not the children's fault. So I feel like we can't be like, oh yeah, we're going to teach them how they can fix it. We have to talk to the families as well so that we can create a conversation between everyone. 
about sustainability, of course. Yes, so <laughs> this was one of our initial ideas. Uh, it would be really cool to uh, make toys that were broken have uh, new functionality, such as why shouldn't a bear have wheels instead of legs <laughs> uh, if it's broken? Uh, and then we wanted to bring drawers. <coughs> so um, what happened here was that we didn't, we hadn't visited the children's museum in one of their exhibitions yet because they hadn't had any that part of the year or in the beginning of the year. Uh, and Alma actually told us that oh, but a lot of small parts can be hard with children. And we didn't think about this at all because all these drawers were supposed to be filled with like tools and parts of toys. And then uh, our idea was that we could sit down together and fix everything. And then in some of the compartments, there would be videos popping up with like um, explanations on how you can fix certain things. So like if you use super glue, you need help from a parent or stuff like that. Um, yeah, and we wanted to give the toys new life, new meaning, and even new functionality. And as you can see here, <laughs> we were collecting data because now we were presented with like the first exhibi exhibition of the year. And I have to say that the Children's Museum is, in my opinion, a lot more fun than adult museums <laughs> because there's a lot more interaction. Uh, and yeah, we played with so many different stuff. But what we also saw was that the volume inside, because it was just like a big hall of different stations and children running around and parents running after them, and it was really loud. And some of the um, things you could do as well made a lot of noise, such as this um, to the upper left. You could make music with your hands, which was really cool, but you could barely hear it because <laughs> everything else was so loud. Um, and we also found that we were very committed to our ideas, at least me. I was like, yes, but we can, we can do this. It's okay. Uh, <laughs> we can create this space for us. And, and then we just had to sit down and, okay, we need to talk to an expert. We can't just like do our stuff. That's not the point at all. Then we just lose ourselves in this. Uh, so we talked to, um, she's, uh, yeah, she's in... She works a lot with children. I don't know exactly what. I think it's in a kindergarten, actually, um, or in a church. But yeah, she works a lot with children. And she, we asked her, like, OK, so when you want to engage children, and they have to work together, and we also want them to work together with others and their parents, do you have any ideas for us? <laughs> and she was like, yeah, sure. Uh, she had one point that we used with this, which was that we could walk down this path and then there would be trash all the way around the path. And the point was to collect as much as you could and then um, sort it. I don't know what it's called. When you throw it in the right bin. Yeah. And so if you uh, threw it in the right bin, there would be um, leaves on the trees lighting up. And this would be really nice because then you could see the interaction all the way that OK, so uh, if we throw this here, yeah, great. And then you could ask if you were in certain, like, I don't know where this paper is supposed to go. And you could ask someone else. And also we thought that it would be cool if uh, some trash was hidden under rocks so that only small fingers could reach them. And some would be uh, high up so that you had to help have help from bigger people to reach it. Um, yes. Then we found out that we wouldn't have our separate space, or at least we thought so. So then we were like, OK, this could be hard to solve. <laughs> and then we made an, a mood board, because we were like, OK, so we want this to be light, happy. How can we make it engaging? Because we've seen the museum. It's really fun. So we, need, we want this to be in style with everything else. Uh, yeah, as you can see, we focused on colors. Working together is very like sustainable. Ooh, yay, great. <laughs> and then this was, well, it's not the solution. It's the prototype. <laughs> um, this was our first lo-fi lo prototype uh, where um, 
these big round galaxies are um, parachutes. So if you see at this picture, there is like a big parachute. It, we wanted to use that idea further because um, the woman from the kindergarten that we talked to, she said like, oh, this is the f most fun game we do. Uh, and so we wanted to use that. And that's where the idea of, okay, let's lift the world together. Let's um, keep it as long as we can up in the air and let's share it with each other. That would be really cool. And so we wanted the ball to be like a big globe. <laughs> and I wanted these parachutes to be galaxies just because <laughs> that's really cool. You can like throw the ball from one galaxy to another which proved to also be kind of hard. And that's where uh, Maria and Lena, for example, came in and told me like, how do we make galaxies <laughs> in these uh, parachutes? <laughs> yeah, so we made another low fidelity, a bit more high resolution to just show. This was our first one that we made to show Katie from the Children's Museum what we thought, to just make sure that we were on the same page. And here is another one where we kind of want to show the interaction. So one of our ideas was if it was a big tree like this, we could have different color leaves and they would light up from every time you managed to throw the ball from one team to another. And then we also thought that, okay, so what if there's not five people? Because you can't be alone in one parachute and it's also kind of hard to be two. So if we were, say, three people, we could just have the interaction be like, okay, how many times can we throw it in the air? Because that's actually more difficult than one could seem or think. Um, yeah, so another one was that there would be more and more leaves turning green instead of like brown and dead and just to yeah, keep the score or make a positive feedback. And here's the solution in action. Uh, as you um, can see, there is no globe in this ball and that was because Two weeks before we were supposed to show this uh, or host the exhibition, both Maria and I had corona and we were quite dead. <laughs> so um, laying in bed, I was like, ah, oh, we need to make this. We hadn't har had our chance to do it yet. And actually a day before we, we had this, I sat at home just sewing. And I bought some cheap shower curtains, which proved not to be the best material for this because um, as we tried it before any children had come, I ripped <laughs> the whole side of this, which you can see is why I'm taping it there. <laughs> and you can also see here, this boy is just like ho holding tight and we're holding in the parachute itself because everything was kind of falling apart. And in the end we had to use duct tape and that worked really well. So it was, <laughs> but it was, um, it was so much fun and it was a great success actually to see how uh, it's not that visible here, but every time we managed to get the ball from one side to another, there was a bit more leaves in the tree. And so it took quite a while before the tree was full. And every time we were like, oh, look, the tree has more leaves. And the children were like, wow, <laughs> great. And at one point we actually had like a two-year-old and it was only her father, uh, me and her. And I mean, it was, the tree was full and she didn't realize. So every time we managed one more time, we were like, oh, look, there's one more leaf. And she was like, whoa. And it, was, it just kept on going and it was really fun. And we also had an opportunity to talk about um, what we can do to keep the leaves green. Like, how can we make sure that trees are happy and doesn't, don't turn sick? And yeah, so that, that's how we try to keep it positive. And we also um, talked a lot about how we have to actually work together to manage this. Like, we tried showing some of the kids like, oh, try to do this alone. Oh, no, it doesn't work. So we have to do this together. And it's the same with sustainability. You have to, you have to work together because otherwise you're kind of lost. <laughs> and I also just wanted to include the globe here to illustrate how it was supposed to look <laughs> because it wasn't that easy one day before the exhibition. There was a video and it just, showed, it just showed that it worked really well and it was super fun. And it was also really interesting to see that um, some of the parents were actually the worst in working together. Like all the children were like, 
if there was a team with children and a team with parents, the children would be like, okay, one, two, three, do it. And then the parents would just be like, oh, uh, wow. <laughs> and it was, yeah, it was chaotic. <laughs> and also some of the parents were so uh, competitive that it wasn't fun anymore because they were just like, why aren't we winning? <laughs> so yeah, that's all I had. Thank you for listening. Yeah. Way and so, on. so I wanted to ask you if in the end it encouraged you or discouraged you from making more projects like that? Oh, it was really encouraging. And especially because what I forgot to say was that we also wanted to see this in the bigger picture. And for us it was really fortunate to work with a cultural institution because then we can like vision it turning bigger and better all the time. And every time we had a new iteration of like, oh, I don't know what I'm doing anymore. It was just so much fun when we suddenly, like, after we talked with the expert, for example, she had so many good ideas, and we were like, oh, okay, so we still we can still do this. And I think it would also be really fun to do it over more a bigger period of time, uh, because I didn't show it that well, but this has been going on for, like, three months, so it's been kind of chaotic, and kind of we've been working fast, so... I'm very, I want to do this more and I would love to work with this and I think that's the only way I want to work ahead because I've done a lot of user-centered design and it's really nice to look at the bigger picture and feel like it actually matters to more people than kind of one <laughs> person. Yeah. <laughs> yeah? Anything else? Oh.